Good day fellow investors. In this video we are going to explain how to calculate intrinsic value. We'll first define what intrinsic value is, what are the key components that go into the formula. I'll give you the template, also downloadable, so that you can put in your input figures, your estimations about your stocks, and then that you can get an intrinsic value pretty easy. And we'll explain all of that by using an example, in this case Amazon stock. If you get value from this video, please click that like button because it helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm and supports the channel. Thank you. Let's start with the definition. Warren? Well, intrinsic value is what is the number that if you were all knowing about the future and could predict all the cash that a bit a business would give you between now and Judgment Day, discounted at the proper discount rate, that number is what the intrinsic value of business is. And the formula, Warren? Discount of present value of future cash, yeah. Thank you, Warren. So Warren said a lot of interesting things. Now we have to see what are the factors, the input factors that go into the intrinsic value formula, which are those that we have to assume and think about to get the intrinsic value at the end. When it comes to intrinsic value, we have to first think of three key concepts. So it is the cash flows, as Warren said, or the earnings, so how those work together. What is the value that the business creates? What is the value that the business will create in the future? Thus, we are talking about the growth rate. And then we have to think about the concept of time. How much is $1,000 in 2030 worth now, for which we use the discount rate. If we start with the factors, the first factor is cash flows or earnings. How do we get those and what is the number to input in our formula? The definition of the available cash for distribution is calculated by using the following formula. So we have reported earnings plus depreciation and other non-cash charges minus capital expenditures necessary to maintain the operations of the business and working capital needed. This is a little bit complex, but we can simplify things, especially if we analyze, let's say, simple, long-term, stable, good businesses. If we take a look at Apple, here you have the net income, so it was 25 billion 10 years ago, 40, around 40, 50, now it is close to 60. Here you have the earnings per share. And if we look at free cash flows, those also depend on the business. If the business is growing and investing a lot, the free cash flows will be a little bit lower. If it's a stable business, mature business, the free cash flows might be a little bit higher. When you analyze a business, you have to get a feeling what is the key number there. Perhaps the easiest thing is to just take net income and then adjust depending on what kind of business you're looking at. Where can you get this information? It's pretty simple. You just go to Morningstar, type Apple, click on Apple, and here you have a lot of data about the companies, the quote, you click on key ratios and full key ratios data and you get the full financial data over the last 10 years from revenue, shares, earnings, plus more financial ratios that can help you with determining whether something is a buy or not. But also for other companies, this makes things a lot easier. However, this is a data provider. I always prefer to check things within the annual report because data providers, they hire vendors and there can always be errors. So use this as an indication, but always check with the financial report. Also, if you just put into Google Amazon earnings, you'll get a lot of sites where you'll get the correct earnings for that business. But always check with the annual report. One site that has good data, especially for economics, is Trade in Economics, and I'll show you another site for business fundamentals chart in a moment. And here we have Amazon earnings, qu quarterly earnings, 12.37, 10.3, 5.5, 5.6, 5.7, 5.8, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9,
5.01 and 6.47. If I sum those up, I get to 34, 15, which are Amazon's earnings. And we're going to use those at the beginning of our calculation when we put things into the template. Now, when you just quickly compare Amazon's stock price with the earnings, you see that earnings are $34, but Amazon, the stock price is $3,156.97. That's a price to earnings ratio of 92.45, which you would say, Sven, this is too exuberant, this is overvalue, it can't be that the intrinsic value of the business comes even close to that because of its high valuation. However, let's go to the second component of value, which is growth. Another page that's nice is macro trends. So you have here all the data about the companies, always check the annual reports, but it's really, really nice. And here we can see the revenue, trailing 12 months revenue for Amazon and the staggering growth the company has achieved in the past. Plus you have the growth rates in the past. And we can say that on average over the last seven, eight years, Amazon has grown at what, 25% per year. Now it's growing faster and we'll see about in the future and we'll see about the growth in the future. But let's take 25% as an average growth over the next 10 years, let's say. However, Buffett said something about how certain are you that there will be birds in the bush tomorrow or in the future. And therefore, to adjust for possible mistakes when it comes to predicting the future, so 100% sure you'll make mistakes, we can make scenarios. Scenarios make you think in a different way. If you have a worst case scenario, a best case scenario, and a normal case scenario, it will give you scenarios and then you say, okay, can I tolerate the investment if the worst case scenario happens? Can I be very happy if the best case scenario happens? And what's the normal outlook, the most likely outlook? And then you can always put probabilities in the template, 25%, 25, and let's say 50. And then you get to a sum of intrinsic values, most likely there, but you're also mentally ready for the worst case scenario. So always think about how certain are you about your projections. Then when you compare it with, I don't know, 20 positions in your portfolio, then you see, okay, this I'm not that certain, this I'm more certain. It's a better investment, even if the intrinsic values might be the same. The next step to calculate is the discounting rate. So at what rate are you going to discount the future values a business is going to create for you? There have been many, many discussions at what is the perfect discount rate. Some say it's the risk-free rate, so the US Treasuries rate, because that's very certain that you will get the money. So when you compare with, okay, the rate that I can get on my money that's risk-free, then you can use that. Some say it's weighted average cost of capital. And there are many theories about what discount rate to use, complex theories. But when listening to Buffett and Munger, you can really simplify things. And you simplify by using your expected return. Let's say you are investing and your expected return is 8%. You always use 8% for every business out there and then it makes things easily comparable. When you use such a discount rate, you know, okay, this is my target. And then also if something is trading at your intrinsic value now, it means that if you buy it now, then you're likely to get the 8% return over time. So making things easy, take one rate, stick to it forever and it will give you great comparative results. So let's start with discussing the formula. Here you have the inputs, here you put the earnings, then we grow the earnings over the years. And now, as Yogi Berra says, it's tough to make predictions, especially about the future. We have here put the terminal value. Do we know what will the world look like in 2035? No. But we can estimate what will the world look like in 2025, 2027. And then we can say, okay, 
most likely this business will have a terminal value. We use the earnings in 2029 the most certain earnings that we expect and we multiply that with the price earnings ratio in 2030, 20, 2031 depending on the year you are calculating that. That terminal value then goes into the sum of present values of future values that you get from that business and that sum is your intrinsic value. Let's go to the Amazon example that will make things pretty clear and please subscribe because tomorrow I'm going to do 10 stocks just to make you more comfortable with using this very powerful investing tool. Here we are, company name, we said Amazon and uh, the earnings were 34.15 and now we have to put in the growth rate for the next five years. Let's say that Amazon keeps growing at 25% from 2025 to 2030 or 2026 to 31. Let's say that it slows down a little bit to 12% and discount rate, let's say I expect 8% from my investment. Terminal multiple, what's the price to earnings ratio? Now 90, going to be in 2030, 2031, with 12% growth. Let's say it's going to be 30 for Amazon. And then I get to an intrinsic value of 2,776 with these assumptions. If we compare it to the stock price, we are pretty, pretty close. So this could be what the market is expecting. However, when it comes to predicting, we said we have the worst case scenario, the best case scenario, and the normal case scenario. I'm going to take these rates and put them into the normal case scenario. And I'm going to make a worst case scenario here. Let's say it grows 15% over the next five years on average, and then 8% Keep the same discount rate. If it grows 8%, the multiple will not be 30 by the market in 2030. It will be, let's say, 20. And the intrinsic value falls down to 1,242. This gives you an impression, okay, what can happen if things go wrong? Best case scenario, let's be exuberant. Let's say that Amazon keeps growing at 30%, then it slows down to 20%. If it grows that fast, the multiple might be, let's say, 45 in 2030. Then the present value is 5,000, almost $6,000. Normal case, we have here changed the multiple. I don't know, remember what it was, 25. And we have the sum of the present values according to probabilities. You can change the probabilities here. Let's say the worst case scenario, zero. 0.2, let's case the best case scenario, a little bit more conservative, 0.2, and let's say the most likely scenario, 0.6. So again, as we said at the beginning, don't be fooled by Amazon's valuation because it, we could say that if the growth rates are reached, that Amazon stock is closed to being fairly valued for an 8% return because that was the discount rate that we used. All of this is part of my free stock market investing course. So if you go online, you go to Sven Karlin Teachable or research platform or free investing course, here you have my research platform with stock analysis in that sector analysis if you're interested in that. If you just want what is free and will forever be free, you have the stock market investing course, you can enroll for free, you have the course curriculum and here I still have to add it because I'm just doing the video, but here in the how to value stocks I'll add this intrinsic value and there will also be the download template so that you can play around with Excel and see the values of your companies. Also every link to everything is in the description below also to yesterday's Warren Buffett video discussing intrinsic value and to when I'll make it tomorrow's 10 stocks analyzed for intrinsic value.
Thank you for watching and looking forward to your comments. Please subscribe and don't forget to click that like button.